Hello, I'm Kathleen Rooney, and I wish that I could see you face to face in person, but safety first, we can't do that. So instead, I'm here in my home, in my dining room, uh, to talk to you about my new book, Share on Me and Major Whittlesey. Uh, my dining room has lots of books. It probably looks a little bit like your homes, since you're booksellers, you probably have a lot of books. Uh, and so to talk to you about Share on Me and Major Whittlesey, I have this pigeon head. I will explain it momentarily. But first, uh, I was the author, I am the author of Lillian Boxfish Takes a Walk. And like Lillian Boxfish Takes a Walk, Share on Me and Major Whittlesey is based on a true story. And it's based on a true story of World War I. And it's about a character named Share on Me and Major Whittlesey. And I think the most important thing you need to know is that Share on Me was a pigeon. Uh, not just any pigeon, she was a messenger pigeon, a homing pigeon. And so, I'm gonna set her down, continue talking to you. Um, so, Cherami and Major Whittlesey sort of tells the story of this pivotal battle uh, in the Meuse-Argonne Forest in France in October of 1918. And Major Whittlesey, the human character, is one of the first person narrators. And his story is one of great heroism. Um, he and his men became encircled behind German lines in something called the pocket where they were cut off from all their fellow American troops. And something that sort of resonates, I think, a little bit during the pandemic when so many of us are waiting inside and can feel very passive is that his heroism consisted of waiting very heroically, um, keeping his men's spirits up, keeping everyone safe as best as he could while they waited to be rescued. And so you get his story at the same time as you get, bring her back, um, Cherami's story. And so Cherami was a British messenger pigeon trained explicitly for this purpose. And a thing I think a lot of people don't know about World War I is that uh, communication was complicated. They had telephones, but the wires were easy to cut. They had radio, but it only went one way. They hadn't quite developed two-way radio communication. Um, they would communicate with runners, actual guys who just ran on the paths to carry messages. Um, they had people on motorcycles, but all of those were pretty tenuous. It was very easy um, to kill the men who were running, to take out the motorcycles, to break the radios, to cut the telephone lines. So they had pigeons as one of the most reliable forms of getting their messages from the front to behind the lines. And so that's where Cher Ami came in. Um, and so I won't tell you too much about the story, but you sort of get this A, B, A, B pattern where you hear from Cher Ami, you hear from Whittlesey, Cher Ami, Whittlesey. Um, so it's two alternating first person points of view where one of the first persons is a pigeon. Um, and just a fun fact, um, I happen to love pigeons a lot, um, but if you aren't a huge pigeon fan, I think Cher Ami is a place to start and you can go visit her at the Smithsonian. Um, don't visit her now, social distancing, but afterwards you can go to Washington DC and she was so heroic um, that they stuffed her. And I think that's another thing that's sort of similar to Lillian Boxfish Takes a Walk, is that um, like the woman on whom Lillian was based, Cher Ami and Major Whittlesey were both incredibly famous at the time of their heroism. There's not a school child in the country in the 20s who would not have known who they were, and now almost no one's heard of them. Um, so it's a pleasure for me to get to um, tell their stories and kind of bring them back into the light. So now, um, that's Cher Ami and Major Whittlesey, uh, but um, you also asked us to kind of speak to how we're handling these strange times, and I think um, during the pandemic, Things that are helping me get through are, um, I teach at DePaul, so online teaching, trying to interact with my students, um, taking lots of long walks, which are very socially distant, kind of like Lillian, um, keeping very, very far from other people, but walking around the neighborhood. And then also, uh, keeping in mind, share me. Um, I love birds of all kinds. Um, so does my husband, Martin, who's shooting this video. Martin, who wrote the mirror thief. Hey, Martin. Um, he and I have the Cornell Ornithology app, and so we like to go around the neighborhood. Um, the migration is on in the Northern Hemisphere, and so I'm looking out my window now, I can see um, birds. So I think just birds are, are really uh, symbols of freedom and symbols of hope, and so looking at them, uh, and baking a lot. And then um, finally, sort of what, what am I doing to try to help support independent booksellers who are so crucial um, to sort of the literary community, and particularly to authors and books? Um, so several things. Um, I live in Chicago where there are so many amazing 
independent booksellers. So uh, Martin and I are in a book club and our new book that we're reading for next month is Circe. So I've been um, trying to get my book club, I can't make them, but I'm trying um, with links and such to get them to purchase that from uh, independent stores. Uh, I've just purchased mine from Women and Children First. It's on the way. Um, we're also ordering uh, other books from local bookstores. And then I'm a freelance writer as well as a professor. And so I've been trying through my coverage um, to sort of particularly showcase Chicago authors and bookstores. Like I just did a Q&A with uh, Javier and Mary, hello if you're listening, um, of Madison Street Books, which had the weird fortune to open their bookstore just like mere days before the official shelter in place order came down. So um, talking about what it's like to be a bookseller then and calling them to the attention of hopefully the book buying public. Um, I just did a review of um, former Chicago author Adam Levin's book Bubblegum um, that ran yesterday in the Tribune. Uh, I'm gonna do a Q&A with Catherine Lacey. Um, and so all of these are things that I try to do to showcase um, the Chicago literary community and then in turn encourage hopefully people to buy the books from some of the many amazing independent stores that we have in Chicago. Um, so yeah, so that's me, Kathleen Rooney, author of um, Share Me and Major Whittlesey. And I said I wouldn't put this on, but now that I'm done talking to you, I think I will. Um, so thank you, and here's Jeremy.